uh, happy 2024. It's actually, like, February 8th. I'm doing this super late, I know, but, uh, I just wanted to come on here and give an update on the books that I read in January. I read a total of 11 books. I DNF'd one book, and the first book that I read was The Shower Habit by Stephanie Ewing. Ewing? I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I really liked the book. It was... It was short, sweet. I read it in about like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Um, I did try to add what she told me to do in this book, and I just, it did not fit my lifestyle. But it definitely was an interesting book to read. It definitely added, like, made me realize, <laughs> taught me how to specifically, like, build those habits. It definitely was very insightful that way, and I appreciate it for what it was. The second book that I read was How to Accidentally Settle Down by Katherine Moryan. To be honest, this book I did not like very much. I thought that it would be different than what it was. For what it was, it wasn't bad. But I didn't really think it would be like an autobiography type thing. I thought it would be more of like beneficial of relationship stuff. She really just told a story of how she fell in love with her high school sweetheart years after they had broken up good book, just not what I was really looking for. So then the next three books that I read this month were the Artemis, the first three Artemis Fowl books. So Artemis Fowl itself, then the Arctic Incident, then the Eternity Code. I did not read these like specifically back to back to back, but I genuinely enjoyed all of them. Um, I've had these on my shelves for ages and I finally just got around to it and I absolutely adored the books. I loved the stories behind them. I loved the creativity that they have. I genuinely cannot wait to get the next books in the series and read more. I could not put them down once I started. It was absolutely thrilling. I absolutely loved it. Moving on, I then read The Fault in Our Stars for the first time. I have had this book for ages and I've never gotten around to reading it. I finally did. And let me just say, this book was the first five star book of this year and so far I have yet to find another one that completely matches it the way that it does. Um, personally, within the last year, I have had a lot of griefs um, and losses because of cancer. So this book, to me, hit a little bit too much close to home. So if I was reading this just like baseline, I would not have rated this five stars. But because I know that this story will be so much better. I plan on rereading it after I have come to live with the grief that I'm going through. I would love to read this again and read it for what it is, not for what I've been through. And I believe that it will be a five star read the next time I read it. This time it was probably a four star, but because of the deeper meaning behind it and really the truthfulness and the realisticness of what this book is, I added an extra star to it just because absolutely beautiful. I love this book. Definitely recommend if you haven't read it. I want to read all of his books. I've read Paper Towns and this one. Next, this month I plan to read um, Looking for Alaska. Yeah, I just genuinely love John Green. Can't go wrong. So then, now we get to the book that I did not finish. The Lost Son by Tessa Gratton. Um, I got about 50 pages into this book before I decided, you know what, it's just not for me. I could not get into it. I just, I did not like it. I did not enjoy the story. It did not make sense. I feel like it was almost trying too hard to be something. The way that everything, they needed to rename all of the states, the way that they needed to rename everything. I feel like this could have been a good, a good book if she had not tried so hard to replace everything to make it more towards the mythology rather than just let it be modernized mythology kind of a thing. So yeah, that was a DNF. I'm getting rid of it, but wanted to keep it until I recorded this. So then after that, Percy Jackson series came out and I've been, I've had been watching it. So I then read the Percy Jackson and the Olympians Demigod Files, obviously quick read, definitely not my age range anymore. So I didn't necessarily enjoy it as much as I could have if I had read it like right after I read the Percy Jackson series. Though I do enjoy the book. I liked the added um, personality, the added 
just the availability to learn a little bit more about Clarice herself with one of these stories and I appreciate it for what it was. I think I gave this, this was a two star read for me. If I had read it five years ago when I had finished The Heroes of Olympus, I definitely would have rated it better. But because I'm, this just is not my age range anymore, but I did enjoy the book. After that, I read Homeroom Diaries by James Patterson. And this book, I really couldn't decide what I liked, if I liked it or not liked it until the very end where she was at um, the grave explaining her story. And though I definitely did not enjoy it as much as I should have, it was a decent, good, decently good book. It had very nice themes in it. Definitely a good read for people in like middle school, high school. But as a college student, I just feel like this, again, was not my style anymore. But I definitely did like the way that he added the mental health issues into this book without making them voodoo almost, you know? Like, a lot of authors for these ages try to stay away from mental health issues and try to make them much worse than they are. But a lot of the characters here just had, like, the anxiety and the depression and we talk about it and it this book definitely normalized it a lot more than I was expecting it to so on that standpoint pretty nice book then after that one we move on to farewell to Manzanar which I did read in high school but I never really read it fully and I know for a fact that when I read it in high school I just did not fully like read it for what it was meant to be read for. I read it because it was assignment. So I reread it again and I genuinely, this book really, really is a wonderful book to read to understand the history of what happened to Japanese people during World War II. It kind of puts a turn on it where it makes you realize how quickly biases be can become absolutely dangerous if they're not careful and yeah I definitely I definitely enjoy it I feel like this book is not something I will ever read again but it did get four stars out of me so good book really nice storytelling there's a lot of obviously this is nonfiction, so there's very serious motifs in it but the story it tells and the lessons you learn from reading this book are very important. And I genuinely wish I would have read it for what it was when I was in high school. But I didn't. Again, I was a kid. Then, after that, I read Necessary Noise, which is a collection of short stories that was collected by Michael Cart. With original stories by Joanne Bauer, Michael Cart, Emma Donahue, Nikki Grimes, Norma Howe. Louis Lowry, Walter Dean Myers, Sonia Stones, Joyce Carol Thomas, and Rita Williams Garcia. This is just kind of like a little book of family dynamics and like learning family dynamics and talking about how the picture perfect families just are not always it. And so I really enjoyed this book. I definitely have not a picture perfect family. My family has been through quite a lot in this book really points out the fact that even if you don't have that picture perfect family, family is, you know, families can be perfect without being perfect on paper kind of a thing. And it really shows that the struggles that some families feel is just normal for them. And that sometimes family is messy and it's not always perfect. It's not over always punctual. It's not it's not always the best, but at the end of the day, family is family, and we love family as much as we love family, you know? And then the last book that I read was Rascal by Sterling North. This is a classic book, a classic children's novel. Um, honestly, I loved it. Um, kind of hard for me to get through, definitely, because it was a slower story. It was... There wasn't much true excitement about it, but I feel like that's kind of what this book was. 
I believe it was just a story of a true childhood with a pet raccoon. And I never really thought of raccoons. Like, I know people hold raccoons as pets, but I never really thought that raccoons could morph into human life the way that Rascal did in this book. And I really, really enjoyed the story. It definitely was lighthearted, cheery, and beneficial for me when I came back to college. I started college and this was the book that I read. Definitely just helped me calm down at the end of the night every time that I read it. Wonderful book. It got three stars from me because I'm really, really picky about my stars. But yeah, so that is all the books I read. Now, moving on to the stats of books. I to read a total of 11 books. I DNF'd one book. I read 2,567 pages with an average rating of 3.25 stars for the entirety of the books. My average page length for, per book was 233.3 pages. As for genres, I read four fantasy books, three nonfictions, two fiction books, one short story, and one classic. I, of the books that I read, nine of them were pre-owned, two of them were unowned. I had one one star, one two star, five three stars, three four stars, and one five star reviews. I had four physical only books. I read two books only as ebooks, and five of the books that I read were a mixture of the two. So that is, that is my January wrap up. I am going to show you my fun little pages of reviews in my journal because I feel like mine is very simple. I did not go out of my way to do anything fancy. So these are just, I just kind of split the page in half, then put a picture of the book title here, put the title up front, then explain if it, if I read it in ebook, or physical and if it was on my shelf before or not with either a check or an X. So this is the first spread of January, the second spread of January, Fault in Our Stars, and then the DNF book. I don't know how I ended up not printing a picture for Fault in Our Stars, but I didn't and we kind of just have to live with it now. Then there's these guys, and some of these reviews I didn't fill out because I didn't have a whole lot to say. I just kind of, I know how I felt about them. There wasn't a whole lot for me to say about them. I just, you know, I read them to read them, and they had average ratings. And then we get over here to the last book that I read, and then my stats. And that is all that I did for January. So I thank you for watching. Um... I will be back sometime in March to tell you about my February reads, but until that day, I shall say au revoir.